Welcome again at today's uh, Bank Tech uh, conference. At the first sight, the terms of uh, credit, risk, and management seem troublesome. But uh, Mr. Albert Jan Shepers, Director of Business Development and Consulting at SG New Tech, a software group company, will explain how you can grow your business through credit risk management. Mr. Shepers, good afternoon from Athens. How are you, sir, today? I'm very well. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Great having uh, you with us. In your session and looking forward to the next coming uh, 15 minutes. Yes, that will be great. Whenever you're ready, we are uh, eagerly waiting for you, sir. Perfect, perfect. Is it uh, possible to show the, um, the slides that I have? Perfect. Let me start. Yes, they're up. Yeah, let me, let me take it from here. Thank you so much. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My uh, my name is has just been introduced, Albert Scapers. I'm the business director for business development and consulting within SG New Tech, and SG New Tech is a company under Software Group. And um, as has been introduced, I would like to talk about not that much only the risk area of credit risk management but very much how can you use it to grow your business so a business point of view not all kind of lessons learned on uh, say technologies or new algorithms but more how can you structure it where to focus on if you want to grow your business um so thank you for being with me for the coming let's say 10 15 minutes and let me just dive into the agenda for what I uh, suggest to talk about. Let's, let's first start talking about what is credit risk management and why is it important or why do we see it as an, uh, important. Then spend a bit of minutes on the challenges uh, faced in credit risk management. Why do we talk about it? Why do we need to uh, improve it? What challenges do we want to address? And then uh, end up with some best practices from our organization and my, uh, my personal experience on credit risk management and those areas for you uh, i would say to take home or to uh, develop your own strategies or plans based on those things yeah so those three topics will be the only ones deal with it is a short yeah presentation touching on the topic i could spend far more time on it but we uh, agreed to to do a high level touch on the main points and then take questions of yourself in the end if there's any questions um, uh, at the end of the presentation. Let me uh, quickly introduce the company I'm working with. So that's a Software Group. Software Group is a global technology company. It's uh, specialized in uh, digital uh, solutions and integration solutions for the financial services providers. So we supply a host of yeah, say solutions and, and, and software solutions, integration solutions, including uh, the whole credit risk uh, space. We've got about uh, nine regional offices, as you can see here, about 350 people working with us. Um, I'm based uh, in, in the Kenya office here in uh, Nairobi, but we work on a lot of other countries as well. So the nine are the main focus offices and the rest is... Uh, yeah, we, we, we fly in or we bring people there when needed. Right, that's the organization I'm working with. Um, let me now open up and, and, and touch base on credit risk management for this presentation. You can have an endless uh, discussion on it, what's included, what's not included. But let me, let me start with explaining what we see as credit risk. So credit risks in our belief very much refers to the probability of loss due to a borrower's failure to make payments to any type of debt. So it's very much, let's say the external market. It is not controllable, uh, we, we uh, perceive by yourself. It is more or less the organizations, the individuals or the corporates you've been lending to, yeah, are they able to pay, say more or less pay you back huh? or the probability that they can't pay you back. And again, that's something, a fact, call it that way, it's an outside uh, fact. However, if you then look at credit risk management, that's more or less the internal practice of mitigating those losses by understanding the adequacy of the bank's capital and loan losses reserves at any given time. So it is something that you 
can influence or a bank or financial institution or an organization that is lending out microfinance. Uh, we work a lot with them. So it's the whole internal process of mitigating the risk, call it, around credit. And um, so it, it's, it, let, let's be very careful. One is an outside factor. You can't influence the credit risk. It's there. Um, and, and I'll come back to it later on. Understand it. The better you understand it, the better it is. And then the other one is the management is the internal process. Why is it now important? Why do we want to talk about it? One and the major thing organizations always say it's the regulators that began demanding more transparency. We want to know from in, uh, organizations, from banks, uh, financial institutions, where are they? What risk are they uh, taking? Which is perfectly right, but I don't think, and, and, and you will see in the rest of my presentation, that that's the only uh, area why it's important. It, it needs to be done. It's a kind of high, call it hygiene factor. We need to adhere to it. We need to do it. but. I think as well, if you go to the one but last bullet point on my slides, it's not only a compliance exercise. It presents opportunities to greatly improve your overall performance and secure a competitive advantage. And I go back to it in a couple of minutes. What we say or what I look at it from a business point is if you do it right, if we play it proper, if we do it better than our competition, we can grow our business through having our act together, call it that way. So what I say is credit risk management by structuring and organizing it and, and possibly taking up the best practices I come with later on can open doors uh, for new sources of revenues, for opening up maybe new types of credit, introduction of new types of credit, new markets, new sectors, new industries, even new uh, regions. So by playing, and, and you will hear me say it a couple of times, by playing the game, game proper, clever, better than your competitions, you can grow your operations. That's my firm belief and uh, our organization's belief. Let me now go back and say what is actually the, yeah, the challenge with uh, credit risk. Why, why do we talk about, and again, this comes from a lot of organizations we have been working with and what we hear them say, uh, what do they face? What do organizations face and what do they say? One of the, the, the main thing immediately is what they say, insufficient data. And we operate a lot in more developing environments. And this is always the first uh, to be mentioned. We don't have the information or the data uh, let me let me use both of them, the data to make the right decisions. So again, this is one, just not having it. The second one, and that's maybe similar or at the same level of importance, is the inefficient data management. We know it's there. We want to use it. We want to use it to take decisions on, but we can't find it or it takes a tremendous amount of time. So different credit systems, data in different databases. Uh, we know it's there on somebody's laptop, but I can't get it. Those kind of things. So we know it's there, but we can't get it. The other challenge, what we hear a lot is that, yeah, lack of standardized or standard processes. If one organization comes with a request, we go this way. If a similar organization in another sector comes, we have another process. So we can't how do you call, get this efficiency that we want because it's all different processes it's no standardization the other one is what we hear it is um the credit risk management it, it can't be a one-off exercise that you say oh i've assessed my credit risk yeah i know exactly what's happening outside in the market i put my ratings and that's the end of it the outside market or the outside world is changing there's a lot of things, a lot of dynamics, uh, more or less organizations that you classified as green some time ago have changed because their say market has changed or their products have been changing or their uh, region has changed. So to what we say, inability, inability to define and monitor early warning signs. I know something has happened or there could be something happening, but my organization, my process, my systems don't help me with it. In, and let me summarize it as, as missing the big picture to pay, play the game. Um, if we would have all the information, let's say it was there, if it was in a structured way, if we had the standard process, if we could have those early warnings, we could play the game much better. 
So that was more or less one of the, the key um, challenges that we are seeing there. And if you now look at the other side, what are organizations doing? And I come back in, in, in another few minutes on a, a bit of, yeah, say lessons learned from the practice um, or from our, our projects that we've done that can guide you as well. But in, in essence, what are the, the areas to back press? What are organizations doing that are getting their act together here is what we say, a complete understanding of the overall yeah, credit risk. And, and it's a, um, how do you call it, a staged rich risk, call it that way. You need to understand the risk per customer. Yeah, so that's that's the starting base. If we don't have that, then even it could be business customers, or more entities, a more complex environment. And then the last one is your portfolio level. You or most of banks or financial institutions don't have one sector only or one type of clients only. They have, um, yeah, credit outstanding in various sectors, very various regions. And what is the, the risk in this whole portfolio? So granularity at the lowest level plus the overall view. The other one is the, the customer risk, what we call here the customer risk profile. A lot of times we see organizations just taking, let's say looking at the financial risk. We take a look at their financial statements. We go for it based on that one. While we have seen best practices, you have, it's with the, with the buzzword called 360 degree of your customer. You know more or less where he operates, how he operates, what is the management team in the customer, what is the future of this, uh, future strategy of this customer. So the better you know this customer, yeah, the integrated understanding of the customer and his risk profile, you, uh, you gain in the long run. And the last one where we say on uh, best practices, it's not possible to do it just by spreadsheets. It is not, not working on the back of a notebook anymore. Um, there are some cool systems around. Uh, we, we supply one of those systems as well, it's called Credit Quest, but there are others which has got an integrated um, yeah, solution process risk assessment and all those kinds of things, which allows you to move forward very quickly. So you take up the risk assessments and you still have an efficient process, like we said on the other side, or standardized process. Yeah, so this gives a bit of a, a I hope, a flavor of um, the, 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 the challenges and best practices. And yeah, due to the, the time, let me move on immediately in some uh, lessons learned from the projects we run as well. And you can take it actually, I hope as a kind of guidance in, 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 in your future projects. So one is to focus on the streamlining of the whole credit process to improve what we call the TOT, the turnaround time. So key key is the efficiency of your process. And we, I, sh I just showed it as well. Can we from first time we contact the customer or the client or what you the, the SME or the corporate till we give him the uh, specifications of the call it our offer how long does it take can we speed it up I think speed is of essence here including yeah, a single credit management process with the system plop 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 is a key thing going forward get it organized <coughs> uh, sorry then the other one is if you look at the managed credit and operational risk, the two areas of risk. Uh, what we say and control risk at the point of origination, uh, the, the moment you have got the, the, the loan, call it that way, or you have dispersed the loan, you're more or less stuck. You can manage it, you need to manage it, but the fundamental changes can only happen in the beginning. So by doing this start, very well and use all the data which is available there in a very clever way will make you successful. So, and the other one, what we say is do it at an individual level, but that's again, looking at the, the external person or organization coming you, to you. On the other side, you have your current portfolio already. Where does this new loan fit in? Does it support you in your strategic direction? Or should you actually pull out and say, no, we're going to focus on another area? 
So this risk, call it um, credit risk management at the individual, but look at your own organization as well, your operational risk. Then improve the health of your overall credit portfolio. So in, instead of looking at individuals, and I spoke at, uh, about it earlier as well, individual sectors, individual countries, individual entities, try to take that holistic view. We are doing very well in that sector. Why are we doing very well? Do we grow it? We're doing not that well in another sector or are we taking too much risk in this sector if you see the whole balance. So have a look at the, 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 the lowest level and then all the way at your portfolio. It's not an easy one, but maybe that's the last uh, lesson learned as well. There are platforms that can help you. There are platforms that can oversee not only the retail or only the SME or only the corporate loans, but have an overall, yeah, a, a full view of what your portfolio entails and where are the biggest risks for yourselves. Again, like I said earlier on, it is not a one-off exercise here because you will see that the market is changing, the outside environment is changing. So you need to do this on an ongoing basis. <coughs> if you now look at the, what does it bring? And I got one, one slide or more or less something from one of our customers where we've done a tremendous effort in structuring the whole process, including then or taking on as well um, the whole rating engine so that we have more or less the bank policies immediately available. What, what does it deliver? Why, why should you do it? And this comes back to my story on growing your business. If you look at it, that 80% reduction on turnaround time. So for this specific customer, it went down, we, we measured it from loans taking about five days from first contact till uh, acceptance to in four hours. So tremendous uh, improvement there. Related to it, immediately a, a higher productivity of the team because uh, <laughs> things are more speed up. Uh, what we said and, and the way we look at it here, the team could do 70% more uh, loan applications, the same team 70% by having this structured process in place. Then why, why is this important? Again, it comes back to your customers and your customer service. If you give them the, the right article conditions in their loans, um, and you are in time with them, so a quick turnaround time, you will see that the business is growing. I, I, I won't say that it's only because of the, say, process and the system and the rating engine and those kind of things, but it's a core core or a key element in the whole thing. And then if you look at the last one, um, overall, an enormous saving, and that's, again, by higher efficiencies, by reduced turnaround times, you gain a cost saving on your site as well in the whole credit uh, space. So. Yeah, and in, in summary, and this is a very high over uh, presentation, uh, look at it not only from a compliance, we need to do it, and the, uh, the regulators wanted it, if you play the game right. And again, if you get, get it right from the start, please, please, please look at the origination first, because that's the key time to make decisions. And if you can able to use all the data available, yeah, and you, you will have heard the, the big data or uh, artificial intelligence or analytics to be uh, used. There, there must be tools available as well, but use the data available at the point of origination. Um, then I'm uh, convinced that like a number of other clients, you will grow your business in the credit risk or credit uh, space. Um, let me stop here. Um, I think I'm uh, on time <laughs> and uh, let me go give back to the host if there's any questions or any uh, comments. Yes, Mr. Shepherds. At first, thank you very much for your presentation and, of course, being on time. There are two questions. At first, what areas uh, should we focus on first if we want to grow our business through CRM? Is it the efficiency uh, and turnaround times or will it be on the rating itself? And which most ties uh, lends the process? 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's a very clever question and a very difficult answer to this one. Because you can imagine if you have a very efficient process, but you don't use the rating properly, so actually you create more risks, that's not going to work for you. Yeah. So you give a bad loan, call it that way, but very quickly. Or the other way around, if you wait too long or take too much time in your turnaround time, but you give a good um, how do you call proposition to your customers, you lose out as well. That's why I say it needs to go hand in hand. It doesn't make sense to have a very, how do you call fast turnaround time, but give a bad offer or give a very good offer, which takes a long, long time. So that's why, yeah, we, we suggest very much have an, an integrated process and a, a system supporting you. I would have loved to say just focus on turnaround time and life is beautiful, but that doesn't work. Of course. And in your experience, uh, what could uh, an average or a realistic uh, target turnaround time uh, be for a simple, let's say, loan application? Like, like I've just, it, it, again, it's difficult. Huh? You can't say for a mortgage, you need to give it in, um, in, in two hours. However, if you have a simple, and, and where I am from here, you got a logbook loans uh, on based on a, on a, you have a car, you have a logbook, and against that logbook, you can get a loan. It can be done in, in yeah, say, minutes, and go for the, the minutes. Even we're talking with other organizations, they call it nano loans, the very lowest ones, it's called it immediate or almost immediately. The example I gave you was for the more complex loans, about five days to five hours. I think that should be the target, to turning days into hours. If it takes you now a week, be happy if you can do it in seven hours. If it takes, yeah. Great. Uh, once again, thank you very much and hope you have a rest of a great day, sir. Thank you for having me and have a very good session further on. Thank you very much.